And I can know this, that when God's desires become mine, just wait, those desires will ultimately be fulfilled because they're His desires. From Walking in Grace, this is the Straight Truth Podcast, Christian truths in an increasingly secular world. Well, our question for this podcast episode has to do with Psalm 37. Uh, it says here uh, in verse 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. Uh, we live in a culture, especially American culture, where, um, and this can kind of seep into the Christian mindset too, the sort of be-all-you-can-be mindset, the uh, um, you can accomplish anything your heart desires. You know, is that what this verse in this passage, or even just the Bible generally speaking, really saying to us, you know, that God will, you know, grant us uh, any, anything a person desires. Let's just say that that's morally good, not something yeah. totally immoral, amoral. What, what is this verse actually saying? And maybe can you set that within the context of just the Christian life generally? Yeah, Josh. Uh, first of all, you, you, it, would be, it would be good to ask what the desires were of the psalmist in Psalm 37. So the Lord is... I mean, he's exhorting others, of course, through the psalm. But what's, what's being indicated is the desires that are sort of expressed in the psalm itself are the desires that God will satisfy if you delight yourself in him. And when you look at Psalm 37, it, it's a desire for vindication. Evildoers seem to be prospering. And the psalmist mm -hmm. is saying, don't fret yourself over that. Mm -hmm. If you trust in the Lord, he says down in, in verse 5, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Verse 7, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil de devices. So, so the desires of the heart in Psalm 37 are the desires for God's glory, the desire for the righteous to be vindicated, mm. the desire for the for evil designs to be thwarted. And so so that's really the context of the statement in Psalm 37. So right away we've got to ask, when I'm taking any passage of scripture mm -hmm. and applying it to me, am I hearing it contextually? Mm. Or have I taken it out of the context? Now we talk about the desires, you know, uh, for a career or the desires right. for a car. Yep. And that's not yep. at all Psalm 37. Mm -hmm. So that would be one thing to ask. The second thing I would say is, even if we were to take this in principle form and say God satisfies the desires of his people when they trust him, mm -hmm. we would still have to say the desires that he satisfies are, are the desires that belong to people who trust him. Mm -hmm. Righteous desires, mm -hmm. godly desires, biblical desires. So... The desires of the heart in this context are the desires of righteous, godly people submitted to their God and submitted to his word. So before we, we hold to the part of the verse that talks about God fulfilling the desires of our heart, if we're going to principalize it. I want to make sure I'm someone who's trusting in the Lord. Are his aims my aims? Mm. Uh, his desires my desires? And I can know this, that when God's desires become mine, just wait. Those desires will ultimately be fulfilled because they're His desires. Is there any sense in which I can say that I, th that I can have confidence, it's not, not a prideful confidence, but I can, a boastful one, mm. confidence that the Lord through His Spirit is guiding me in my life. And, and I know, you know that, that I, I've been walking in step with the Spirit, we might say, yeah. um, uh, practicing all, all the Christian disciplines. I'm, I'm a faithful member of a church. Right. I'm, I'm working, serving faithfully the, the membership of the church, doing the one another's of the New Testament, uh, praying, reading the Bible, and confident that the Lord is leading me. That I can have confidence that when I have a desire, as long as it isn't contrary to, say, God's uh, you know, ultimate purposes or the immorality I was saying yeah. earlier, a sinful desire in that sense, but just a desire, let's just say, a desire to um, go on this mission trip or something along those lines. Is, sure. there, is there a sense in which I can say, um, this is a desire of my heart, but I know um, that the Lord has given it to me, right? And, I can yeah. del and I can, I'm delighting in the Lord, and he is, he is the one who is giving me this desire specifically. Yeah. I would personally pro probably throttle that just a little bit. I'm, I'm always really nervous without Scripture, to say, I know God is leading me to do this. Yeah. I, I think what I would say instead is, I've examined this decision. I can't find 
any place in Scripture where this decision would violate His will, where it violates Scripture. I've thought about the circumstances around this decision, and I can't think of circum circumstances here that would violate His will for me. And, and that, that involves not just the counsel within my own heart in view of Scripture, but counseling mm -hmm. with people who know the Scriptures right. well and care about me right. and would want to rescue me from bad decisions. I've looked at all of this, and, and as best I can tell, I'm free, mm -hmm. it's permissible for me to do this. Now, do I want to? Mm -hmm. And I think at that point, I can trust my want to. Okay. Right? So, so, in other words, I'm not, not going to be sinning if I do what I want, given mm -hmm. uh, the other caveats. You mm -hmm. know? So, submitted myself to the Lord, wanting to do His will. I often say to people, Josh, before you make good decisions, try to, to reach a place of, of neutrality. If God's will for my life were, were to be to go left, I could do it with joy. Mm -hmm. If God's will for my life were to, were to be to go right, I could do it, mm -hmm. I will do it with joy. Mm -hmm. Take this job or not take it. Mm -hmm. If the answer is not take it, I'm joyful. If the answer mm -hmm. is take it, I'm joyful. Okay, now, examine that job decision in light of principles of Scripture. Is it gonna keep you out of church regularly? Is it gonna get in the way of family life to a degree mm -hmm. that, yeah, you may make more money, now you're not gonna see your wife or children nearly as, I mean, so, so mm -hmm. weigh those sorts of things. If everything seems like it's okay at that point, after that kind of examination, I would just ask the person, "Do you want? Do you want to take the job?" Yeah. yeah. And if you do, then you then you can. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a process by which we examine, we submit our hearts to God before we can trust the desires that are found there. Make sure that they're submitted. How do you reconcile this with other passages passages that say that the heart is deceitful? Yeah, Jeremiah wicked. seventeen nine. Yeah. Yeah, the heart, heart of man is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked, who can know it? One, I think that that particular verse refers to man in his natural condition. Okay. So salvation does not remove sin from us mm. on, on this side of glorification. The flesh is still present, sin still indwells. But my heart has been changed. Mm -hmm. You know, I have been given a heart of flesh. I have been given a heart that desires to please God by the miracle of new birth and regeneration. So, so I'm not sure that Jeremiah 17, 9, in fact, I would say I don't believe that Jeremiah 17, 9 refers to, to the regenerate man. Okay. It's the unregenerate person. Mm -hmm. But there is a warning in Jeremiah 17, 9, even for the regenerate person, mm -hmm. that Paul echoes in the New Testament, not, not echoing Jeremiah 17, 9, but echoes the concern. Mm -hmm. When he says that he's, he, he was not conscious of anything against himself, but that didn't exonerate him. The mm -hmm. one who, who examines him is the Lord. He's talking about not being concerned about man's examination right. as much as God's examination. Mm -hmm. So I need to have the kind of humility that recognizes that more can be going on in my heart than I'm aware of yeah. Yeah. with respect to temptation and sin and the flesh. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't want to be overconfident in the, the judgment I have of myself, okay. which is why I want to bring others into the conversation. Do you, mm -hmm. Is there some blind spot here? I'm not conscious of anything, yeah. Yeah. but is there something That's I'm missing? Central. But as a believer, I can say sincerely that I want to please Christ. A passage that we've referenced on another podcast regarding marriage in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 39, when you have a widow who wants to remarry, she's free to marry whomever she wishes. That gets to the level of her desire. That's true. Yep. Only in the Lord. So make sure this decision matches Scripture. It's submitted to the, to the Lordship of Christ. You're going to mar marry a fellow believer. But then the question is, do you want to marry him? Mm -hmm. And if you do, you can. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good way to walk through decisions as a Christian. Examine it from the standpoint of Scripture. Does anything violate Scripture? No. So therefore, it's permissible. Uh, is it wise? As I think now on the principle level, not commands, but principles. Mm -hmm. Is this the wisest decision I can make? doesn't seem to be unwise. As best I know myself, is there any kind of sinful motivation at work here? Not that I can see. Let me reach out to others who know me well and who, who love Christ and want to help me walk well with Him. Do they see anything here? No. Do you want to do this? I do. All right. It's permissible. All right. It's also permissible not to. Yeah, that's good. So, so do what you want at that point. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, Straight Truth is listener supported. So if you'd like to find out ways how you can help us to continue to produce this podcast, you can go to our website and find out ways to do that, straighttruth.net. 
At that website, you'll also find links to all of our previous episodes and our social media channels, so be sure to check it out. Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingingrace.org.